Has he kept you? Has he made sure you had everything you needed? Has all your bills been paid before? Have you been, have you been able to eat? Have you had, you know, drink, able to drink? Have you been had everything you needed and that you wanted? I'm sure that a lot of you are going to say yes. So why are you doubting him now? Jesus had to bring me back. He resurrected me. Dark places, wrong faces, broke me down bad, but I made it style so official. I be dripping. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's Nepa TV, and I'm back with another video. And I'm back with another video. Hey, 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 hey. You're probably wondering why my hair looks crazy. I want to get this word out, so we're going to do, you're going to get ready with me. So I'm going to get ready for work while I talk to y'all, okay? So today, you see the title, okay? I'm coming, you know, listen, we, we come in a different way today because we got to have some correction. But first, let's let the Lord have his way. So Heavenly Father, I ask you to have your way today. Speak through me, Lord. Every word that I speak may be a word that comes from your heart. Holy Spirit, take cover, touch each and every heart that they may be receptive of it. Whose word this may be for. I thank you for all that you do, and I thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so... My question for you today is, are you looking at your situation? Are you looking at your circumstances? Are you looking at your problems? Or are you looking at God? Huh? Answer that question. What are you looking at? Because sometimes we get discouraged and we get upset and, and we get all down in the, in, the, in the dust because things don't seem to be going our way, right? And we say we trust God. But when things don't go our way, when there's when we think they should be going our way, or the way we think they're supposed to be going, then we get discouraged and we no longer trust God. But my question to you is, how many trials and tribulations has he already brought you through? Think about that, just for a second. How many trials, trials and tribulations has he already brought you through? Did I put your rest up? No, okay. So it's, it's, it's sometimes when we, when, we, when we get discouraged whenever things don't go right or to us or um, when God tells us, you know, just hang in there, I'm going, I, I got you. And we still get discouraged and we still upset and we still over here complaining like, God, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how that's going to happen. When before God has always, he's always came through. That's a slap in his face when we do stuff like that. And I'm a part of this community too because there's times where, I get discouraged and I have to remember who is my provider. And for those of you who know that God comes through, especially whenever you need it the most, we have to learn to just um, trust him. Not say that we trust him, but you know what? When a situation arises, we have to say, you know what, Lord? I'm not even going to worry because you have come through every time. And I'm not about to sit here and be discouraged because I know that you're going to make a way. We have to learn to say things like that and believe them. We have to learn to believe them. Now, I have a story in the Bible, so we're going to come out the Bible. It is Deuteronomy 1, right? Let me get the chapter for you. Let me get the chapters for you. Hold up. So, go ahead and turn to your Bibles in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 1, all right? And so, basically, what Moses is doing is he's recapping. He's letting the Israelites know all that God has done for them, the, um, the, the trials that they went through, the journey that they went through. And um, so we're going to start at, let's say, um, Deuteronomy 1, 29 through 32. Okay, and I'm going to break it down for you a little bit. I'll, I'll get this curl together. So um, basically what's going on is that the Israelites were, they were discouraged. They were like God was letting them know, look, I got this promised land for you. You know, this this is a place where you can thrive at. This is a place where your kids can grow up at and they'll be safe and they'll be protected. And you won't have to build your own houses. You won't have to build your own companies. Everything's already built. You just have to walk into it. Well, the Israelites, they didn't believe it. Why? Because they looked at their circumstance. Whenever God sent spies over to the land to see what the land was like, um, there was giants there. Like back in the day, and this, I still believe in giants, but there were giants. They were huge. They were over 13, 14 feet. So they they was in control of the land. That was their land that they lived in. But there was lots of fruit and there was lots of vegetables and there was a, lots of grass and land. And that meant a lot to them back in them days. And so God told them, I'll give this to you. But they didn't believe it because they were looking at the giants. They're like, well, those, 
the giants are going to squish us. They're going to demolish us. There's no way that we're going to be able to go over there and defeat them giants. Now, here's the thing. Here's, here's where the slap of the face comes in at. Because it's like God's God. It don't matter how big the, the, the circumstance is. It don't, ma it don't matter how big the giant is. When God is in the midst, he can do anything. He can demolish any giant. When God, when you put God first and you trust that God's going to do it, he can make anything happen. He can vindicate you with that court case that you got going on. God will vindicate you. You got a situation going on at work. God will vindicate you. God will make sure that, that you, you win the race. Okay? And it may look like you're not going to win. It may look like, oh my gosh, everything's going wrong. It's not going the way it's supposed to go. I can't believe it. I don't know. No, God said, I will be there for you. God said, I will help you win this fight. But here's the thing. Here we are. We, we get discouraged, even though we know that God will do it. We get discouraged, and then we, we, we end up not believing him. And, and listen, God gets mad at him, and so then he got, he got mad at them. Because it's like, they're like, no, we can't go over there because them giants are going to beat us up and, and, and they're, they're too big for us. All right. So I'm going to read for you. It says, this is what God's saying to them. Like after they're like, oh my gosh, the giants are going to beat us up. Like, no, right. He says in Deuteronomy 1 29, but I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord, your God is going ahead of you. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way as you traveled the wilderness, just as a father cares for his child. Now he has brought you to this place. Come on. God said, this is verse 31, Deuteronomy 1, verse 31. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way as you traveled through the wilderness, just as a father cares for his child. If God has brought you this far, Okay, I'm getting hyped now because I'm I can feel the chills. If God has brought you this far, what makes you think He's going to leave you now? Because you keep looking at your circumstance and you're not looking at God. God can do anything. When we look at our circumstance, this is just like when you're in sinking sand. Okay, when you begin to panic, you sink. When you begin to panic and sinking sand, you sink. But if you calm down, you can find a way out. But when you look at your circumstance, oh my gosh, everything just, everything's just not going right for me. It's not going to go right. Nothing ever goes right for me. No, I lost my job. This is not going right for me. I don't have no money. My bills are due next week. Like, you're so worried. But he said, I kept you all along the way. So during your journey that you have with God, I'm not sure what your journey is. But during the journey that you have with God, has he kept you? Has he made sure you had everything you needed? Has all your bills been paid before? Have you been, have you been able to eat? Have you had, you know, drink, able to drink? Have you been had everything you needed and that you wanted? I'm sure that a lot of you are going to say yes. So why are you doubting him now? Okay? And see, so here's God's response. Because God gets fed up when we do stuff like that. Especially when he brought you out of such tough situations. And he brought you to a place where you're stable. And he's been keeping you all along the way. You know what I'm saying? You ain't you ain't never needed for nothing yet. And you now and you now you look at your circumstance and now you doubt him, even though he didn't build, build you the whole way. Now look, Deuteronomy 1, verse 32. It says, But even after all he did, you refused to trust the Lord your God, who goes before you looking for the best places to camp, guiding you with a pillar of fire by day and a pillar of cloud by night. Verse 34, when the Lord heard your complaining, he became very angry and he solemnly swore, not one of you from this wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give to your ancestors. Do you want that to be you? Do you want God to cancel out what he has for you? Do you want God to be like, you know what, since you don't believe me, since you don't trust me, it's all right. I'm going to go give it to somebody else who does. Don't be that person. Because see, God is a God of love. He's also He also has anger too. Because what angers God is, is that I didn't brought you through the storm, the rain. I didn't took you out of that relationship. I didn't bless you with a new job. I didn't give you your kids back. I helped you win that court case. I brought you back to your relationship. I gave you a husband. I gave you a wife. I kept you. I gave you a house. I gave you a car. And you're still doubting me. And you're still saying, what is this? How is this going to happen? Are you serious? And listen, I'm, I'm on fire right now. So this has to be the Holy Spirit. Are you serious? I done did all that for you. I healed you. I healed your parents. I, I, I did all that you asked me to do. And you're still doubting me. Because it gets a little tough. When the road gets a little tough, you want to back down. You have to understand you're going to go through some circumstances. In order for 
God to know that you have faith. He has to see that you have faith. So when things you're going to deal with oppression. You're going to deal with pushback because God needs to see. Are you going to have faith in spite of the circumstance? No matter how hard it looks, no matter how hard it gets, are you going to believe that I will stand and I will be there for you? Because I was there for you every other time. What makes you think I won't be there for you now? How dare you? That's a slap in God's face. That is a slap in his face, and God, th th this is God, y'all. This is the Holy Spirit because he's, he's over me. And, and there's some people that need to hear this because God is feeling some type of way. Because as soon as we go through a little bit of trials, as soon as a storm comes, we want to sit there in, in the middle of the storm and cry. Are you serious? Get back up and stand. When it gets tough, that means stand. Stand in my word. Stand in faith. Believe that I'm going to do it for you. It may not happen the way that you think it's going to happen because I'm God and God does not move the way that you move. God does not think the way that you think. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. He's not going to come the way you think he's going to come because he's not a human and he don't think like humans. So here's today I'm telling you. God said, I'm going to come through, but I need you to trust me. And I'm not talking about trust me with, with, with your mouth. I'm talking about trust me with your heart. When you see that storm coming, you better know that I'm going to protect you through the storm. Know who you are. Not only know who you are, know whose you are. Be careful with what you say. Don't be like, oh my God, like... How am I going to feed my kids today? God feeds the birds and he feeds the bugs and he feeds the animals. How much more do you think he's going to feed you? You think he's going to let you just sit there and starve? We need to have more faith. Faith is believing without seeing. You're not always going to see it. But guess what? A lot of things are already happening in the spiritual realm before they happen in the natural. A lot of people will say, oh, well... Everything is not spiritual. Yes, it is. Before anything comes to pass, it has to happen in the spiritual first because the spiritual realm is the more real realm. What do I mean by that? That's the realest realm is the spiritual realm. This natural realm doesn't happen unless something happens in the spirit. Because when we die, we either go to heaven or hell. That's a spiritual thing. When we die, these bodies, they, these bodies stay here. These bodies are, are no longer important. But what's on the inside of you, that soul, that spirit, goes somewhere. It goes to hell or it goes to heaven. There's either or. Guess what? A heaven is eternal and so is hell. So understand that. Everything is supernatural. So there are things that God already has ordained. There are things that God has already set up for you before you even knew it. But he needs you to trust him. If I, he said, if I have brought you far this far, if I have done everything for you, if I have provided for you, what makes you think I won't do it now? Just trust him. Some people say, well, it's hard to trust him. It's hard because you won't do it. Just trust them. Okay, God, I don't know where the money's coming from. God, I don't know where the help is coming from. But God, I know that you do it. God, you see my circumstance. God, you see that I need a new job. God, you see the uh, my marriage and how it, I need your help. God, you see how my children are acting. But I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to put this back in your hands and I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to believe that you're going to do something. Now, there may be instructions that he gives you on what you're supposed to do because faith without works is dead. So he may tell you, okay, pray more. He may tell you to go on a fast. He may tell you to, to walk away from this or walk away from that. Just be obedient. We may not always understand why he's telling us to do certain things. Just do it. Because when we're disobedient is when we miss out. Don't miss out on what God has for you. All right? So look, that's the message for today. Listen, the Holy Spirit took over. Because, honey, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> because listen, I felt God so heavy on me as I was talking. I'm talking like, and, and you see how passionate I was when I was speaking? I felt the Holy Spirit so heavy on me as if that is God's mode. Like he's like tired of the complaining. He's tired of the crying and the moping. Not because you're just, he's not upset that you're discouraged. It's not that he doesn't want to hear it. It's, it's just that. It's a slap in his face because he's done so much for you and you're still crying and you still don't believe that he'll come through. 
That's why it's a slap in his face. But if you haven't already, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Be sure to join the team. I have another channel, which is a reaction channel, and I just started posting on that again. So be sure to check that out. And if you guys like more entertainment, that 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 will be on that channel. I have all my social medias if you have to talk to me. My email's in the description below. I love y'all. God bless y'all. Stay tuned.